welcome back to my channel or if you are new here for the first time then hello welcome in today's video i am bringing you along the journey of making over our kitchen island so we went ahead and took on this diy project it's been on our list for quite some time we spent a lot of time on pinterest looking at what we wanted to do and we are so happy with the design that we came up with like any other diy project we ran into some issues along the way but we pushed through and we couldn't be happier with the outcome this diy project has definitely made the most impact here in our home to date on all of the projects that we've done so we couldn't be more excited about that we felt like it really just added so much to our home made our home look more high-end and luxurious and it really gave our kitchen a lot of visual interest so i can't wait to bring you guys along show you how you can do this in your home if you are interested i will leave all the supplies that we used listed in the description box down below if you have any other additional questions make sure to leave them in the comments down below for me and i will get back to you if you are not already please make sure to subscribe to my channel and follow me over on instagram if you're not already and without further ado let's go ahead and get into this diy getting this video started i wanted to share with you a before view of our kitchen island i also wanted to include a clip where you could see our current bar stools and what they looked like next to our builder grade kitchen island first we are going to start by taking a utility knife and start by cutting the caulk that has secured the baseboard to the kitchen island Once the caulk is successfully cut, we are going to go in with a crowbar, or I should say my husband. I am totally capable of doing this, but he enjoys doing all of our projects, so that is why you will see him most of the time doing our big DIY projects. But I love creating content for you guys to share with you how you can do this in your own home. Once my husband has removed the baseboard, we are going to see what is under these corbels that are on our kitchen island. This was one of the main things that I was really not a fan of. They definitely looked a little dated and gaudy. Definitely not something that we were going for in this DIY project. Now you will see here shortly that this was a pretty hard task for my husband to get these off. They were glued so much onto the wall and it ended up ripping the whole entire wall. So we ended up with a pretty big hole behind here. Thankfully, our amazing neighbor had a piece of drywall that we could use so we didn't have to go buy a new piece at the store, which we are super grateful for. We are taking a break here to use some caulk to secure the first board, which is the baseboard. We are using one by three MDF boards from Home Depot. I will have these linked in the description box down below along with the caulk if you guys would like to use the exact items that we used in today's video. Now I did not film my husband repairing the wall because we are by no means pros at this so I would highly recommend hiring someone if you do not know how to properly do it. This is a clip of my husband putting the texture back on to the wall and knocking it down. We do have orange peel texture on our walls and I've gotten a lot of questions in every single DIY that we do. When we have an accent wall, we do not get rid of the texture. That's just not something that we've ever done and I honestly don't mind the look of it. Next, we are going to start securing more of the boards starting with the top piece in the front. My husband did miter each of these boards on the side so that it can line up perfectly with the other board for a really nice clean finish. And then we're taking our nail gun to secure. Most of our tools are from Heart. We absolutely love them and I will have them linked in the description box down below for you. We could not be happier with this cordless nail gun. It has been a total lifesaver, especially for my husband. We don't have to use a corded one anymore. I will leave our exact dimensions of our island, but remember every single island is obviously a different length, so you will have to take your own measurements. Here we are just making sure that the boards are even on each side so we can make sure everything looks symmetrical. I wanted to quickly touch on the corbels because I know I will get questions on this. We did consult with someone from our builder and multiple other professionals, and we did learn that anything over a 14 inch overhang does need a support, but our overhang is below that 14 inches. Therefore, 
we do not need supports. So that is why we removed the corbels and we are safe to do that in our situation. Now, if you are removing supports or corbels, whatever it may be, make sure to contact someone who is a professional that does know that information. But I just wanted to quickly touch on that so that you guys did know that we did go ahead and make sure that was okay. Here my husband is filling in all the nail holes and then he is going to start caulking. These two things really complete any DIY project when it comes to accent walls. It really makes everything look built in to the house and like it was permanently put there. After he's finished that, he's going to start sanding, which let me tell you, it got very dusty in our house. I spent the next few days dusting around our house because everything was covered in dust. We did have as many windows and doors as we could open so that we could get some good ventilation in there, but there's just nothing you can really do, especially when doing DIY projects in your own home. While we wait for the front of our kitchen island to finish drying, me and my husband are going to start painting. We are using Sherwin-Williams Iron Ore. This is the color that we used for our fireplace in our living room right across from our kitchen. I will have that video linked down below if you did miss that. We love this color and we thought it would be a great contrast in our kitchen as well and keeping the same light colors to keep that consistent color scheme in our house. My personal favorite painting tape that I love when we're doing projects is frog tape. It has been the best tape that we've used with getting clean lines and making sure that paint doesn't get anywhere we don't want it. Again, I will have that link down below for you guys if you are interested. Once the front of our island is dry, we are going to place the other two boards. I love the way that this turned out. I love that there is three rectangles here on the front. It gives it a nice custom look. I'm going to take our cordless nail gun once my husband has made sure that everything is level and even. Again, the same thing here. We're going to take some caulk, fill in all the nail holes, and then we'll be ready to paint the front of our kitchen island. Once we are done painting, letting that dry, removing all the tape, this is our completed Kitchen Island DIY makeover. We could not be happier with this project. We love the way that it turned out. I think it gave our kitchen a lot more visual interest and gave it a nice contrast with all the white. Now here you can see what it looks like on the back of our kitchen island. We did leave the cabinet area white still. 
I'm not sure that we'll always keep it that way, but I don't mind it right now. I would love to get your opinions on if you think we should paint the cabinet area, the iron ore color, or leave it white. And this is what it looks like with our new bar stools, again, contrasting so well. I would love to hear what you think of it in the comments down below. Thank you so much for being here for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and follow me over on Instagram if you're not already, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.